so when I first started the vlog, I talked about how my goal was to try to win the gold medal at the silver medal, sorry, the silver medal at Kansas City. You know, I uh, prepared really hard and I documented that on the vlog and that was really fun. However, you know, one of the challenges that I didn't really think about until just now is what I'm gonna talk about now that that's over. So um, I am in the process of uh, texting out for some Q&A for today's episode and hopefully I can get a couple good questions in uh, by the time I get back from the gym and we'll film a good Q&A episode today. So that's what we're thinking about doing. Okay, now I'm on my way to the gym. And uh, so what has been happening since Kansas City? Well, um, I did put out a vlog, you know, kind of going through some of the basics of what the judges thought. So make sure you go to the previous episode and let me know what you think. Other than that, I've just been getting tons of work done. You know, I go in phases if I'm being perfectly honest. Like I have phases where, you know, the hard work element of running a business is not something I do well. Um, but then I'll go through phases where I'm actually perfectly happy and kind of excited to put my head down and do some serious stuff. And uh, so I've been excited to do that for the past week. I have had, uh, you know, some really good work get done. And uh, apparently some people want to get run over today. That's nice. Um, so that's pretty good. That's kind of what's been happening really. Like nothing interesting, certainly nothing I can film and put on the vlog, at least not yet in my creative journey. But uh, today we'll get to some interesting bagpipe stuff and we'll keep the ball rolling. In a couple of weeks, the uh, cruise will be happening and I think we'll get some great content then uh, for the vlog as well. So excited about where things are headed. I've also got some new bagpipe goals I'll tell you about uh, pretty soon. But uh, for today, we'll uh, keep the day going and do a nice Q&A vlog. Okay, so uh, I've already been to the gym, all showered up, changed, heading in, and uh, we got some good questions coming in, so we're gonna address those as soon as I get in. So, looking forward to that. I have to do a quick meeting with Carl first, and we should be good to go. What's up everybody we're here doing some questions here so i asked on the facebook uh for questions pertaining to bagpipe stuff to get the vlog going today and i actually got way too many questions that i could ever answer in one vlog um, you can see i'll show you a picture technically this is a sea lion sunbathing on top of a car uh, but if you stand by we can get to some of the questions that we got so uh Still trying to see, multitasking. So here we go, eight more comments. So we got like 10 really good questions and we're gonna get into those. Whoops, let's focus back on me, zoom out. Okay, and we're gonna get those going here right now. So let's get going. Okay, first question, Kim is asking about uh, gadgets. So drone enhancers, respectfully, no. Uh, the problem with drone enhancers is uh, you're trying to learn an important skill through not having to learn an important skill, right? So what drone enhancers do is they're supposed to do two things. They steady out your drones and they help you with starts and stops. Like that's, that's a very quick explanation of what drone enhancers do. They're little inserts that fit inside the drones. And uh, the problem with both of those things is don't you just want to learn how to produce a steady, great sound? Uh, and don't you just wanna learn how to start and stop uh, properly? 
And the answer should be, of course, yes. Now, in the perfect world, if the drone enhancers did not have any negative impacts, then they would make perfect sense. But in this case, the drone enhancers subdue the overall resonance and richness of your drones, okay? And you're sacrificing that richness uh, when you put them in to sort of artificially help you with those other topics. That's one man's opinion. Um, drone enhancers are a, a product on the market that tons of people buy and believe in, but not me. That's just, that's just where I come from. I'm an advocate of learning how to do it properly um, and not using drone enhancers. Next that you ask about moose valve. Uh, a lot of people I know use the moose valve and love it. Uh, it's a very super simple version of a water trap. And if it works for you, uh, you should absolutely explore it. That of course has no negative impacts on tonal quality um, unless it doesn't filter enough moisture causing your bagpipe to sound bad, in which case, obviously, not the right product for you. Uh, some of the other newer gadgets, I'm not a big gadget guy, like um, some of my favorite newer gadgets, like the Peterson Tuner is an amazing tool that um, a lot of top bands are using and I think is absolutely the best tuner uh, in the world and it's the best tuner for tuning bagpipes in the world too. Just remember, a tuner should be used as a tool, not as a crutch. Okay, Andra and Milan wrote in asking about temperature. Here's, what the, here's the wording. How do temperature and humidity affect the pipes and how do we compensate? I think this is a great feature question for today. Now, hmm, how are we going to explain this? Let's see. Uh, let me get, okay, clipboard. That'll do, and I need like a Sharpie that's clear enough that people can see it. Okay, I got a Sharpie. Okay, uh, let's get to work explaining uh, bagpipe temperature and humidity and how we're gonna deal with it. Um, before we get started properly today, I, um, <clears throat> recorded a vlog yesterday and I was talking about temperature and humidity and its effects on bagpipes and I hated how it came out. So I kind of want to talk through it again <clears throat> and I'm actually just going to record this and put it in the vlog as well. But um, All right, <clears throat> the question is, and you guys can help with this, temperature and humidity, what effect does it have on the bagpipe and how do we compensate? Think about that for a second and uh, start typing in and help me out. Okay, so <clears throat> that's good. So here's what we know. As we play, the heat, okay, let's call it the heat from our breath, raises the temperature inside the bag, uh, causing pitch to increase. But as Deb is pointing out here down below, right, if we stop playing, uh, and by the way, this explanation would be if we were playing in room temperature. If we stop playing, the external environment will um, we'll lower the temperature inside the bag and the pitch will drop, okay? That summarizes the effect of temperature in, in like a room temperature environment, right? As, as we start to play, our, the breath that we breathe is, let's call it 98 degrees Fahrenheit. We don't know the real temperature unless uh, we put a gauge in there, uh, but our, the breath coming from our mouth is like, you know, pushing 100 degrees. If the bag is at room temperature, right, our breath is going to heat up the air inside the bag. Very simple. And then that uh, heat, <clears throat> as it rises, is gonna increase the pitch of the chantery. And um, that's not speculation, right? That is what happens, okay? Now, <clears throat> humidity. Now, a lot of people are concerned with the humidity outside in the external environment, but really we don't have to worry about that too much, except for that you can expect that the outside humidity represents the inside humidity of the bag, I, you know, as long as 
they've had a few minutes to acclimatize, right? So the bag is already starting off with a lot of humidity inside. Um, we've talked about this before. John Holcomb, uh, you know, thinks that when we exhale, the humidity of our breath is pushing 100% humidity. I'm not quite sure about that, but let's just say we have a lot of humidity in our breath. So as we play the humidity inside the bag, the humidity inside the bag goes up and up, okay? Um, by the way, if we stop playing, does the humidity go down inside the bag? Um, the answer is probably yes, but not, not at a hugely fast rate. Like it needs time to sort of like diffuse or osmosify that moisture outside of the bag. And uh, you know, if, if our bagpipe is set up well, there's not that many places moisture is going to sneak out. So I'm going to say when we stop playing, humidity doesn't necessarily, I don't know if that's spelled right, don't care, doesn't necessarily uh, go down right away. So what's the problem here that we have? So we play for a while, the temperature goes up and up, the humidity goes up and up, right? What's the problem now when we stop playing? When we stop playing, the temperature is going to drop inside the bag, but the humidity is still very high. What happens scientifically? A very small amount of condensation probably isn't the worst thing, but the more humidity we have inside the bag, the more condensation is going to be formed as the temperature decreases. Remember, and this is like, you know, we're talking about room temperature here, okay? talking about room temperature environment. So whatever the dew point is, that's what we're talking about. Whatever the dew point is, it's a certain temperature where water starts to condense, right? Once the temperature inside the bag drops below that dew point temperature, uh, moisture is going to start to condense. Um, if it's extremely humid inside the bag, okay, the dew point temperature gets higher meaning moisture starts to condense sooner and sooner and sooner. So what does this mean? Well, it means we just have to be aware of what's gonna happen. Because sometimes, let's say we're playing outside in the cold in the morning, right? The, uh, the temperature is gonna decrease really fast inside the bag when we stop playing, okay? And moisture is going to condense really fast in that scenario, so we have to be careful of that, right? Now, some humidity is a good thing. You might say it's a necessary thing because the, um, that little bit of moisture makes the chanter reed vibrant and it makes it vibrate, you know, uh, more freely and more harmonically. So some of that's a good thing, but it can become a problem when everything becomes saturated and we run into tons of trouble. Like the drone reeds are gonna shut off that they get so wet. And the chanter reed is just gonna sound like a gurgly mess because it gets so wet. So, you know, that's the effect that temperature and humidity are playing inside the bag. It's, it's basic science, just like anything else. And then what do we do, you know, the next part of the question is, well, what do we do about it? And the answer is you have to be aware of it and you have to strategically, um, you know, organize the way you play around what those conditions are gonna be. Whew, that was a whole lot of talking and I know, uh, you know, I know it was kind of a lot to soak in. You can watch this video a few more times. Um, it's something we talk about and teach all the time at Dojo U and so, you know, it's something you can find more information on if you want to head over to our website. Um, and certainly, obviously, if you're a member, it's something that we will work on you with as much as you need. Um, that's the name of the game though, really, isn't it? And, and developing an understanding of that, becoming a bagpipe weatherman uh, is exactly what's required in order to really get that nice stable sound. 
if you run a pipe band or you're in charge of tuning up a pipe band, this becomes like doubly and triply important. If you look at the great pipe bands in the world today and of yesteryear as well, if you look at those bands, the masterminds behind the tune-up are bagpipe weathermen and women. <coughs> Excuse me. So they have a hugely good understanding of how this all works, and they orchestrate their entire pipe section in such a way that they all get to this stabilization point at the right time. And so it's, it's kind of a fun game. Uh, it can be a frustrating game, uh, but it can also yield amazing results. So... Um, hopefully you enjoyed that answer to that question. I'm going to address more of these questions on Facebook throughout the week, um, but that uh, is going to do it for today's um, blurb in regards to bagpipe stuff. Thanks so much for sending in the questions, everybody. If I didn't get to your question today, I'm going to by the end of the week. See you soon.